Hello, my name is Zachary Zumbo. My name is Nicholas Scoff. And today we'll be doing a lesson on the binomial theorem and Pascal's triangle. Take it away, Nick. All right, guys, over here, as you can see drawn out, we've got Pascal's triangle. And this can be used to find the coefficients of binomials multiplied together. Right now, I'll show you guys how this triangle works. So, as you can see here, this moves in an increasing degree of binomials multiplied together. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It goes all the way down as far as you need it to go. This row will represent binomials multiplied to zero degree, one degree, two degree, three degrees, and, four, and so on. Now, to get these individual numbers within Pascal's triangle, you take the two numbers on the top and then you add them together. So, for example, three plus three equals six. That's the next term in this sequence. Six plus four equals 10 goes right here in between them. So if you take this, 1, 4 is 5, 6, 4, 10, 6, 4, 10, 1, 4, 5. And these coefficients can be used to multiply binomials together, and you use the coefficients to have a simpler way to find the multiplication instead of just doing it one by one. Next, I'll show you guys how Pascal's triangle is implemented to multiply the binomials together. So over here, you can see an example, x plus y squared is a fairly simple binomial to multiply on its own, so you might not have much trouble multiplying it together. However, x plus y to the seventh is a much more complicated problem and can be much simplified using Pascal's triangle. Here we see the final expanded version of this binomial, and you can see a pattern of the coefficients as referred to from Pascal's triangle previously. It goes from the seventh degree right here, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7. And you can see those coefficients repeated here along these. Now, the pattern to building these, the exponents of each term from the original binomial follow a, a unique pattern. Now, the first term is going to start at the degree that you're multiplying it of and decrease as you go along the expanded pattern. So it goes 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 as you go along down the line. Now, in the case with the second term, the y will start at a degree of 0, or so it is not here, then it keeps going up, and then as it goes along and along, it increases all the way down to y to the seventh down on the very end. This pattern can be used to expand any binomial that you want to any degree that you want. Here's another example down here with 2x minus 3y cubed. Now, it's very important to make sure that when you plug these terms into the binomial, you have to make sure that each term is in parentheses to the exponent so that the signs do not get mixed up because as you can see here, the negative number in here will affect how the expanded term comes out. So when you multiply it out, you see that there's an alternating pattern with negative plus negative when you have the subtraction sign in the binomial. All right, guys, next I'm going to show you how binomial theorem is related to combinations and Pascal's triangle all looped into one. So here you can see the binomial theorem in its raw form, x plus y to the nth power. Now, in a previous video, we discussed how n choose 0 is 1, and n choose n is also 1. So that explains why the first and last coefficients of the term are going to be 1. Now, as you move along in the expanded terms, you see n choose 1. And this relates to Pascal's triangle. So if you have an nth degree of, let's say, 6, you go down to the 6th row, and you move over 1 to get your coefficient. So as you move along, you see this pattern continues, n choose 1. And then as soon as you get to the middle, it changes to n choose n minus 1 because it goes back down. Now, Pascal's triangle is symmetrical on both sides, so when you come along, like for example in the sixth row, you go 1, 6, 15, 20, and after 20, since it's symmetrical, you go back down in that order. So the combination has to be n minus 1. Now, in this final example, 4x minus 5 to the third, we can see how this all is related together. So we take the first term, 4x to the third, and then negative 5 to the zero, so it's, uh, it'll just be 1, so it cancels out, plus 3 times 4x squared, then negative 5 to the first, 3 times 4x to the 1, negative 5 squared, then plus negative 5 cubed. Now make sure when you're doing this again that your terms are in parentheses so that the negatives do not get left out. We get our final answer to be 64x cubed minus 240x squared plus 300x minus 125. All right, now I'm going to show you how to find the rth term of an expanded binomial. So the rth term can be any number within the polynomial that you want to find. So this is the basic formula for finding r, and what you have is n, which is the degree to which the binomial is raised. You've got k, which is the term you want to find, that's subtracted, or you subtract 1 from that. And then you have x to the n minus k and y to the k. So n choose k multiplied by this will give you your fourth term. 
So an example of finding this is what is the fourth term of the binomial x minus 6 to the fourth power? We see that n is the degree that our binomial is raised to, so we have 4 chooses our degree minus 1, or the fourth term minus 1, I'm sorry, is 3. So 4 choose 3 times x to the n minus k, which is 1, then negative 6 to the third equals 4x times negative 216, gets our fourth term to be negative 864 times x. The next slide will include more examples in practice. Hopefully you've gained an understanding of binomial theorem. Short